It's been such a long time that I feel like we should be saying, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I have missed you guys. Oh my goodness. Guys, welcome to the Journey to Purpose podcast season three. I'm your host, Erica Lasan, your joy strategist and the founder of Journey to Purpose. I am really excited to be diving into this week's episode because it's been a long time coming like if you've been following this podcast and this platform and this journey work then you know that we've been away for the past year and it's not because i didn't love you guys anymore trust and believe i have missed you so much and there's been so many things that i've wanted to share but i was journeying as well <laughs> As I always say in our tagline, we're on the journey together, one feel good thing at a time. Over the past year, there has been a huge transition and a huge shift, not only in my life, but in the journey to purpose business. I ended up getting into a an accelerator business program, which kicked my behind in all of the most blessed and amazing ways for the past nine months. I mean, we went through another year of transitioning out of a whole pandemic. Like a lot of things have happened in my life, but I'm sure a lot of things have been happening in yours as well. So in this initial episode of season three, I'm going to be talking with you guys a little bit about why you should be prioritizing this new year with a new mindset and what it has to do with new wine. This is going to be a quick episode, but I promise it's going to be a heavy pour. So you want to make sure that you stay through to the end because I have some words for you, some words of encouragement, and hopefully some words to carry you through this new year and the rest of your journey moving forward. Stay tuned. <laughs> but first, I have a song. I know you guys have missed my karaoke, so here it goes. <clears throat> in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine in the soil i now surrender you are breaking new ground you are breaking new ground so make me a vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be i came here with nothing but all you have given me jesus bring new wine out of me jesus bring new mind out of me jesus bring new wine out of me because where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom and the kingdom is here I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Cause where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. Lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. So my prayer is, Lord, make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be god i came here with nothing but all you have given me jesus bring new wine out of me jesus bring new wine out of me as yes, lord 
Jesus, bring new life out of me. And that's my prayer for you all and myself this year. Okay, now that's done and the nerves are gone. I hope you guys liked it. But enough about karaoke and songs. <laughs> Let's do a little story time, shall we? Because this story time is one that is probably going to resonate with all of you who are entrepreneurs and those of you who may be operating a business and you're trying to figure out how to move in your day to day. And part of the reason why I'm sharing this story is because I think oftentimes when you are an entrepreneur or you're a business owner, so much of how you think you have to do business is based on the world and the world's way of doing things, the world's way of seeing things, the world's way of uh, convincing you of the things that you have to do versus sometimes taking a break, a pause, a moment to really evaluate what your spirit is telling you to do and how it resonates with who you are and what your identity is. And I don't know about you, but I identify first and foremost as a child of God, which means that I am a child um, of the creator of the most high and I have unlimited resources and opportunities available to me. So why would I limit myself to thinking solely on the world's terms? right? Like, are you picking up what I'm putting down? How often have you thought about doing something new or trying something new and feeling like you didn't want to do it, but you felt like you had to do it simply based on, well, this is what I was taught or this is what I know. I want you guys to know that that is one of the quickest ways to not only lead yourself to burnout and unfulfillment in what it is that you're building and how you're living your life, but it's also one of the quickest ways to misalign yourself with your divine purpose and the vision that God may have called you into and the calling that he's placed over your life. And I know that sometimes conversations like this are easier said than done but i want you to know that you're not alone in this so for today's story time i want to share with you guys a little bit about what inspired bringing back the podcast and it starts with a boot camp joy boot camp um for the past year i've had this idea of doing a joy boot camp and i think it's really important that i mention that i've had this idea for a year because while I may have had the idea, last year God gave me a completely different vision. And it is a vision that had been aligned with the work that I was doing with the Journey to Purpose, um, but it was bigger. <laughs> it was so much bigger and I, it blows my mind because I didn't think the vision that God had given me could get any bigger, which is kind of crazy to say, right? Like. But the scripture from Ephesians 3.20 that talks about God giving us immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine is so real. And the more we understand the concept of that and the gravity of those words and we claim them over our lives, the more we get to experience that immeasurably more. Initially, when I started the Journey to Purpose, my goal was to work with individuals entrepreneurial women looking to create more time, energy, and space for themselves to rediscover joy. And in the past three years, that vision has just grown and grown and grown to the point where last year, God gave me a vision to not only work with individuals, but start working with corporations. And I remember um, in November of 2021, on this very podcast, I can't remember specifically which episode it was, I spoke plainly about what it was that I wanted moving forward. And it was a really scary, um, it was really scary for me to say at the moment, but I remember saying, I want to pursue public speaking. I want to be a motivational and inspirational speaker. And I remember as the words left my mouth, I felt very nervous saying them to the point where I remember my stomach feeling weird and I remember stumbling over my words. You guys remember that episode? If you don't, I'm gonna see if I can put a clip here. I was in the tank. I kind of had a moment of real honesty <laughs> with myself um, about how I've been doing things and things that were working for me, but also some things that weren't working for me. And in a couple of ways, 
I don't know why this is making me so uncomfortable to to think about this or say this out loud, but one thing that's come up for me a lot over the past year, year and a half that I kind of keep like mushing to the side is this desire to be a professional speaker. And so those why I'm sharing this is because the vision was so big and at the time when I said it I didn't know how it would happen I didn't know how I would be able to speak with these corporations I didn't know who I would contact I didn't know if it was even something that was really possible for me though at the end of the day all things are possible through Christ right we know this but at we are also human so we can sometimes get very caught up in what we believe is possible just based on who we are and our limited knowledge and our past experiences. And that was the case for me. But as I went through last year, as I went through this accelerator program, there were so many points where God showed me the vision that he had in mind for me versus the one that I had created for myself. And it blew my mind. There were opportunities that were were brought to me beyond my wildest dreams and expectations that I, I hadn't necessarily sought out, but I'd asked for in prayer. There were opportunities for me to grow and be mentored and guided in a way that allows me to scale my business that, again, I hadn't necessarily asked for, but these opportunities were brought to me. Um, and then just opportunities to connect with people that <laughs> I wouldn't have known to reach out to, but God. <laughs> it, it, it really just goes to show how important it is to not only dream bigger, but to believe bigger and to also trust that the vision that God has given you is a good one. And if you can believe it, you can achieve it. But the best part about it is that you don't necessarily have to be the one to do the work. If you're operating by faith, you're simply moving in accordance with the steps and the um, breadcrumbs <laughs> that the Lord and the Holy Spirit is bringing, bringing to you. I was getting these opportunities to speak at colleges and universities. I did a full day workshop with Pfizer at the end of 2022. That is a testimony and a story for another day. If you're interested in hearing about it, let me know and maybe I will share it in a future podcast episode. I say all this to say that I found myself backsliding. Some things started to happen with some of the clients that I had. And I remember for a quick second feeling very like, uneasy and nervous like oh my goodness what should I do what should I do and I found myself rather than anchoring and doubling down on the thing that God had told me to do I found myself reverting back to I want to call them old habits <laughs> but um, what felt safe I had this idea to launch the joy boot camp and it was for me it wasn't an act of faith it was something that was um, built on this idea of having control over things. Well, if I don't, if I'm not able to do what God has told me to do, let me have a backup plan. And here's the problem with that. When you begin to build backup plans for what God has already called you to and what he has in mind for you, you're not operating by faith. And as someone who preaches and teaches and believes in the power of faith, there came a moment in time when I needed to realize subconsciously how much I was actually operating in fear rather than in faith. And the beautiful part about this story is that it took someone else shining a light on that for me <laughs> and to me for me to realize it for myself. And uh, if you've been following the podcast for a while, you know I always talk about having a vibe tribe and I am a huge proponent of having accountability in your life because accountability not only holds you to your vision, but it reflects back to you the things that you truly desire for yourself and the things that you've stated you wanted or you didn't want. And one day as I was talking to my brother about this Joy Boot Camp that I was hosting, he basically called me out on it. If you've, if you've been listening to this podcast, then you know my brother is the one that usually comes for me, okay? 
<laughs> and I don't mean that in a negative way. I actually mean it in a very endearing and loving way. In that moment when he called me out on it, I, I feel like I wanted to be defensive. But the more I sat with the things that he was saying, the more I realized that I really didn't have peace about doing this joy boot camp. Yes, I was excited about it and the fact that it was an opportunity to create something new. Yes, it was aligned with the mission and the journey program and process, but it didn't necessarily align with what I believe the Lord was calling me to do and the way he was calling me to do it. Does that make any sense? Have you ever experienced that in your life? I did not have peace. And I can't necessarily explain on this podcast without taking up a whole lot of time why I didn't necessarily feel immense peace about it. But I went through with it and I, I hit the launch button. The first of the year, January 1st, was when I was going to start selling tickets. And I still didn't have complete peace about it. I went through that process of starting to sell tickets and then the Holy Spirit just, he got me again. There was a women's ministry meeting, actually it's called Mops at my church, Moms of Prayer. And I, I forgot that it was happening on the Tuesday, three days after I hit the launch button on this Joy Boot Camp experience. And I wasn't going to go to the MOPS meeting because I just felt like I had so much to do, which red flag, if you are someone that is a believer and you're prioritizing your work and your personal responsibilities over um, your spiritual life and connecting and fellowshipping and all of those things um, in different ways, know that that can also be a red flag. And for me, it kind of was the idea of being busy and i can't i can't go to church i can't worship i can't serve in this way that i typically would because i have something to do and i don't feel peace about it listen there are levels to this i said no you know what i'm gonna go i am gonna go to this mops meeting because i think i need it and as i went to the mops meeting the holy spirit really began to minister and speak to me through the words of um the person who was leading the group and one of the first, and funny enough, the topic of the meeting was the year of new beginnings. The year of new beginnings, which totally makes sense because it's the start of 2023. It was the first meeting of the year. But the first point that was made about what we need to do in order to tap into uh, the year of new beginnings is that we need to believe God in a new way. I'm going to say that again. We need to believe God in a new way. And for me, that really resonated because I began to realize that in me executing this whole joy boot camp experience, <laughs> it was me not believing God in a new way. It was me not trusting him enough to do the thing that he said he was doing he would do in my life. It was me operating in fear over faith, and it also brought to mind how much. It was misaligned with my theme for this year. As I talk about vision, I usually, especially when it comes to vision boards, I usually talk about having a theme to anchor you and ground you for the year. I think that the Holy Spirit wants me to really focus on trust and connection this year. So those are my themes for 2023. As I master and continue to work on this topic of rest. And as I thought about the Joy Boot Camp launch and the planning, I realized that I was not trusting and I was not connecting. I was operating in fear and I was going back to old habits. And when I realized how much I was operating in fear, I had to sit down and think, well, what about this is making me uncomfortable? Why do I feel the need to go back and do things an old way when I want to have a new mindset and I want to do th things differently and God has given me the tools and evidence um, to do things differently. Why then would I do things in a way that doesn't necessarily serve me or align with the vision that he's given me? And the more I sat with those thoughts, three things came to mind and I'm going to share them with you in the event that you sometimes come across these thoughts. Are you ready? I think you're ready. So here we go. So the first thing that came to mind as I thought about my biggest fears as it relates to this joy boot camp was the fact that I worked so hard. Okay, I thought, well, I worked so hard on this. 
and I don't want to be, I don't want to waste it. I don't want it to be a waste that I've set up these emails, that I set up this event, that I set up this like process and system. So what I realized as I had that very same thought was that it would actually save me time <laughs> and it would create less waste if I just didn't go through with it because it usually costs you more to do something that is misaligned with the vision and plan that God has given you. I'm gonna say that again. Are you ready? If you are considering doing something because you feel like you don't want to waste the time that you've already invested, perhaps you should consider how much time you would be saving, not to mention heartache, not to mention pain and suffering that may come along with doing something that is not meant for you to do. The more I thought about executing this Joy Bootcamp, I just thought about all of the extra work that would be required to get a minimal result in doing that versus just trusting God enough to go through with his plan that he's given me and all of the exponential benefits that could be gained on the back end. And the more I thought about it, it just became crystal clear and it just made obvious sense to stop what I was doing, not go further down that road and that path, but to focus forward on the plan that God had given me and really moving 10 toes down in that direction. One that is led by faith versus working hard and being led by my fears. The second fear that came to me was, I don't want people to think that I don't know what I'm doing or that I'm not serious about what I said when I put out this Joy Bootcamp experience. Because mind you, I've been promoting this for about two weeks and then choosing to not move forward with it. I didn't want people to think that I'm all over the place. Basically, that's it. I didn't want people to think that I was messy. But listen, life is messy. But more importantly, it's not that I'm messy. What I'm doing is prioritizing the, the spiritual presence, the things that I cannot see. And also I am I'm being discerning of what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do and how he's asking me to move. And that requires immense bravery, courage, and faith. <laughs> and please know that I'm not saying this to amp myself up or put myself on a pedestal, but part of the reason why I'm sharing this point specifically is because sometimes some people won't understand what God has called you to do. Sometimes they will not understand the direction that he's telling you to take when it makes no sense to the rest of the world. But let me tell you something, you aren't called to operate in the same way that the world does. Because remember, as a child of God, you've been given a different mentality, you've been given different tools, and you've been given different access and power. So the moment you begin to recognize the power of that, the power of your words, the power of your thoughts, the power of the promises um, of the scripture that are in the word of God itself, the living word, and you begin to, I, I want to say, wield your power accordingly. But you, I, I really think sometimes it comes down to the, the armor of God, you know, understanding how you can how you can tap into the gift of your salvation to do immeasurably more than you could ask or imagine. Yes, sometimes that may mean doing things that don't make sense to other people or changing an entire marketing plan at the drop of a dime because you feel that the spirit has called you to do something differently. Now, I also want to be mindful in mentioning these things to you guys because there are some things that you should be aware of as you do this. Not just making these decisions based on your feelings, but based on what is being confirmed, not only through your devotional times with the Lord, um, but what's coming up in scripture for you, what's coming up um, in your prayer life, what's coming up in conversations that you're having while in fellowship with other people. But you really have to be discerning and attuned to what um, the Holy Spirit is telling you in any given moment. But I don't think that I can really explain this on a podcast because it really is something that's very intimate and personal. But if you'd like to learn more about this and you want to understand the process a little bit better or what it could look like for you because it is different for every person, let me know. Uh, send me a message or leave me a comment and maybe I'll consider doing a different podcast episode about it.
So back to this thought about not wanting people to think that I was all over the place. As I began to have that thought about really caring about the judgment of other people, there were a couple of scriptures that came to mind that really anchored me and grounded me in my peace around this decision. And the first one came from Galatians 1.10 and it says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And I really had to sit with that thought and meditate on it for myself. And the more I sat with it, the more I realized that my continuing to go through with this joy boot camp, though it wasn't bringing me peace, though it would be more work, and though it was completely in the opposite direction of what God told me to do, none of those things had to do with me serving Christ, but really just catering to people and not wanting to be judged. Meanwhile, all of this is in my head because nobody had said anything to me. Think about it. And then the second scripture that came to mind was from Colossians 3.22 or thereabouts. I can't remember the exact scripture, but it's one that I actually shared on this podcast as well. And it was around rest um, and how unbelief is what actually caused the children of Israel to be unable to enter the promised land. And in thinking about that, um, it was their unbelief that caused them to have to work harder. And it was actually through that scripture when I read it a couple of years ago that I read that I realized that unbelief is a I don't want to say it's a curse or that it brings up curses, but unbelief keeps you from living in faith, and that's essentially what keeps you from being unable to rest. And the inability to rest is a curse. <laughs> okay? The inability to rest is a curse. Like for as much as we work and as hard as we work, we're not meant to work so hard. When we think back to God's original plan, it was for us to be children, but also for us to enjoy life. And when we think of how society operates these days, how many people are actually enjoying life versus how many people are just working hard to enjoy life, but they're working so hard that they never actually get to enjoy life. Think about it. So as I sat with these two scriptures, I realized I didn't want to do this joy boot camp. And there was one last thought that came to mind as far as canceling this altogether. And it was realizing that all of these thoughts and emotions and feelings that I'd had in regards to launching this boot camp were a distraction anchored in fear. And this fear that I felt ultimately came down to not feeling that I was I don't want to say good enough, but equipped, well equipped enough or um, capable enough or qualified enough to speak in the corporate space, which was the vision and the plan that God had given me. Not only was it a distraction, the more I sat with the thought of the fact that this was a distraction, I came to realize a couple of things that the distraction was causing me to revert back to old habits that I'd worked so hard to overcome over the past three years. Distractions like getting onto social media and scrolling for hours, distraction, the distraction of um, wasting time and feed, feeling this need to constantly uh, feel pressured to sell to individuals. Just this feeling of like, I have to work hard and I have to prove value. And that's simply not true. And not only had I let go of these habits, I actually didn't miss them. I didn't miss them at all. I had been limiting myself to maybe, if at all, 30 minutes of social media a day. But once I got into this idea of I need to launch this Joy Bootcamp, I found myself being on social media for at least an hour and a half every day, at minimum. But the kicker about all of this is that I'd already been given evidence by God himself and the Holy Spirit that I was capable and qualified, that I am capable and qualified to do the very things that he's called me to do. At the moments when I was operating at my highest levels of faith and when I was trusting him the most, God was able to show me how easy it is for him to give me the desires of my heart, how easy it is for him to lead me into rooms that I didn't think that I was worthy of being in, or how easy it is for him to connect me with somebody that can take the vision or the plan that he's given me to the next level. He'd already done that time and time over. All right, so apparently 
I thought this was gonna be a quick episode and that has not happened, but I want to share with you three solutions that you can use to bring yourself to a new wine mentality. And with these three solutions, my prayer and my hope is that you'll be able to understand how you can begin to think differently when God has called you into something new so that you can trust him more and you can operate more in faith rather than living by fear. I'm gonna run through these really quickly. To be honest, I have to pick up my son from school. So here we go. <laughs> the first solution I have for you to get into the new wine mentality is to see where you have evidence that you are worthy and capable of producing new wine. The Bible is full of stories that highlight this process. And I'm talking about from Gideon to Noah to Moses and even King David himself. I'm sure that if you take time to look in your own life hard enough, and maybe you don't even have to look so hard, that you will find evidence of new wine for yourself. Number two, be honest with yourself, okay? Let's stop lying to ourselves in 2023 about how we're actually feeling, okay? Check your intentions behind the things and the tasks that feel heavy for you or hard in your life, in your career, as well as in your relationships, okay? See where your life feels heavy or burdensome and consider how you can prune those areas or those dead grapes so that your vine can be renewed and your roots can thrive. Thirdly, meditate on the promises of God daily and speak them over your life as words of affirmation because words are powerful things. I talk about this all the time, but your words matter. The way that you speak to yourself matters. The way that you think of yourself matters. The way that you envision yourself moving forward and your future matters. And if you are not sure of what's possible for you or if you have or you believe that you have no evidence of God's promises in your life and you're not sure of how you'll get there, read the Bible, check in, tap into the word of God because there are so many stories and scripture that let you know how some of the biggest and most identifiable characters in the Bible went through that process themselves, but how God not only gave them a vision, gave them a plan, and told them that they were qualified for it, but how he also let them know what would happen and, and the role that they would play in the process of getting to the notable positions that they were eventually in. Again, the same characters that I told you guys about before. This was true of King David. This was true of Gideon. This was true of Moses who had imposter syndrome up the wazoo. Um, who else? Like there are so many, Esther, Queen Esther. Um, oh, maybe not Solomon because he knew he had it. <laughs> He had it all because of the work of his daddy, okay? Who dealt with a lot of feelings. Just check out the Psalms. But I say all this to say, your words are powerful. So mind how you use them because they can be a really, really, really great weapon and a tool to propel your journey forward. <laughs> I'm gonna share a bonus tip with y'all because you know I never give you exactly what I say I'm gonna give you. I love to give you more. The bonus tip is for you to get some support <laughs> and join an accountability group. Um, because this Joy Boot Camp is canceled, but there are many ways that I would love to support you in your journey to purpose moving forward. And it's not just about feeling good all the time, though that is a really big part of the process. Another part of it is really making sure that you are living in alignment with your divine calling and that you're getting to use your gifts and your talents as you do that so that the process becomes a fun and fulfilling one and it doesn't have to feel like work there's so many ways that we can support you through the journey to purpose program whether it's coaching consulting or joining our membership group i would love to work with you so if you're interested in learning a little bit more of what that may look like for you, make sure you check out the show notes and visit the link in the description. Basically, this entire episode is one that is meant to let you guys know that Joy Bootcamp is canceled. Not because I didn't wanna do it, 
though kind of. I am expecting immeasurably more than I can ask or imagine. And I am praying and hoping and wishing and declaring those things for you as well. All right, guys, real quick, because I got to go. I know I said that already, but for real this time. But before I leave you in this episode, I want to give you a couple of joy gems to support you in the journey. I mean, there have been a couple so far, but there are two in particular that I think could be really, really helpful for you as they were for me as I was going through this period of, of understanding in the past week. The first coming from Romans 12 2, and it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And the second joy gem comes from John 14, 27. I love this scripture so much. And it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So good, right? Oh my gosh, so good. Well guys, that concludes this week's episode and I hope that it was one that you enjoyed and that it's beneficial to your journey and impactful for your year moving forward. If you found it to be helpful, I hope that you share it with a friend and I hope that you revisit this episode often or at least anytime you need a new wine mentality. But before we go, I have a really quick question for you and I'd love for you to participate and play with me in the comments. <laughs> I want to know what is your new wine mentality for this year? What are some habits that you are shedding? What are some old ideas that you are pouring out and what are you praying for and believing for this year? What do you think would become possible if you are really to commit to your new wine mentality? Let me know in the comments. Until the next time we meet again or the next time you hear this notification bell because I don't know y'all, I want to talk to you guys all the time and for that reason, I may just give you guys more than one episode a week. They may be little, little shorter episodes, as short as I can make them, but we'll see. I don't know. Otherwise, the goal is to meet back here every Sunday and I hope to see you guys then. Remember, we're on this journey together, one feel good thing at a time. See you next week, guys. Bye.